you're thinking about starting with backyard chickens. Here's some information that you need to know. I wish there was a video like this five years ago when we got our chickens. It would have made our lives a lot easier. So let's talk about coop size. Our coop size is 110 square feet, which works out to be about four feet per bird. Ours is a barn style coop. Um, I feel like it gives better protection for weather and against predators. Some people do decide to do those smaller coops that you can get at um, like a local feed store and they're really teeny. I don't feel like those give great predator protection or heat protection through the winter. Coop size is really important so your chickens aren't on top of each other and so they have adequate space to run around. Come with me into our back coop and see how much space we have. So this coop um, also connects to the other part of the coop so they have adequate space to run around and sleep at night. Bedding is super important part of your chicken coop. Um, it's going to keep them warm, clean, and dry during all seasons. We use pine shavings because we also like to clean out the chicken coop a couple of times a year and we use it as compost in our garden. So for us, that's one of the most important things because we can repurpose what the chickens are laying down. Uh, other people choose to do things like concrete because that's going to keep predators out a little bit better. Um, the downsides to concrete and the reasons we don't do it is because and it's a hard surface for the chickens to run around and possibly injure themselves on if they jump down. Another important part of owning chickens is making sure they have adequate roosting areas. So these are our roosting areas. This is where the chickens sleep at night. They kind of climb up there and just perch and fall asleep. And you do need plenty of room because they don't like sleeping on the ground. Um, this can also get a little bit messy, so you do need to come in and clean them up and scrape them off every once in a while. But otherwise, two by fours work amazingly for this. Layer boxes are also extremely important if you're gonna have egg laying chickens. You're gonna need one layer box for every three to four chickens. You're also gonna to wanna to think about accessibility to get the eggs and where you're gonna to wanna to put it. For us, we did it this way so you don't have to go into the coop. To we just open this little hatch, get our eggs out. Um, there's even a couple right now that I should probably gather. We do need to build some more because we have a ton of chickens. You're also gonna to wanna to put some straw down so the eggs don't get smashed and you're going to want to make sure that they're clean so they don't get all full of poop. So heating the coop. We use a heat pad which is safer. There's less risk of fire and it is good for when you have little chickens. You want to have them have this pad accessible until they're feathered. Chickens usually don't feather and regulate their own temperature until they're about eight weeks old. So we have used a heat pad the entire time and it has always worked really well. We have tried other sources like heat lamps, but again, there's that risk of fire if a chicken were to jump up, fly and hit it, knock it down, and bedding is quite flammable. That's why I recommend the heat pad until they're at least eight weeks old. After that, then it's really just about weather protection to keep them warm. So what that means is you wanna make sure you have adequate space like we talked about with the coop size to keep them out of the wind and the rain and the snow. Animals have that natural um, instinct to get out of that type of weather. So if you give them a space, they will use it and then you don't need to worry about them getting frostbite and things like that. That being said, in the past we kept water in their coop in the winter, which didn't work out well because then that moisture gets in there and we did have some chickens get frostbite on their comb. So what you're going to want to do is keep their water source outside and ever since we've done that we haven't had a problem with frostbite and we do live in Minnesota so we do get very very cold below zero days and temperatures and we have never lost a chicken due to frostbite or freezing cold because you're, you have that space for them to go into when the weather is really bad. Um, on I think it's gotten probably 30 below here on those days. If it's super windy, we do just keep them locked in the coop instead of letting them free range. And that has made a huge difference. But other than that, you don't need to worry about a heat source after that eight week mark and they are fully feathered because their body temperatures will keep them warm. And if you keep them out of the elements, that's all you really need to worry about. I think a lot of people overthink heat, especially in colder climates because they assume that the animal will freeze they will not as long as you give them good, clean, adequate 
bedding, hoop space, and out of the elements. As you can see, they're all huddled in this spot right here, and that's because that is where the heat pad is. You do want to make sure you have a little bedding over the heat pad, because otherwise they could slip on it and have an injury. So we just throw a little bit of um, the pine shavings over the heat pad, and it still radiates right through there and is super warm, and we've never had a problem with fires or any safety problems with that. Most people think that you want your coop airtight. You actually don't want that. That's why we have these built-in removable vents so you can get circulation in and out. Predator prevention. There's a few things you do need to know about this. We have learned the hard way on this one, unfortunately. Um, a year or two ago, we had a mink that got into our chicken and duck coop, and it took out our entire flock of ducks except for one and a couple of chickens. So you do want to be diligent on your predator prevention. There are a few things you can do. Um, what we chose to do is we dug down about two feet deep and we put down wire all the way around the outside of the coop. Another thing we did was we built a chicken rung with permanent fencing on the outside and dug that down two feet also. So hopefully that keeps minks um, and raccoons out. Those were the biggest predators that we've dealt with. Another thing we did is we also put wire underneath all of the bedding in the coop and then we put some wooden pallets that we had on top of that to hold it down and hopefully keep out any predators that would want to come in. That way when they try to dig up from underneath there's just that extra level of protection. Another thing you're going to want to do is get a rooster or a guard goose. I suggest a rooster because they also, um, they keep your flock safe from predators by alerting them. They also keep the hens from infighting, which means um, if you don't have a rooster, hens will tend to, one will assert its dominance on the other one and pick on them and then they'll end up getting defeathered and you'll have a bunch of chicken fights. So roosters are good to have for several reasons, but predator prevention is the number one. They pay attention to the sky and keep your flock safe. If you don't want a rooster or you can't have a rooster in your area because you're in city limits, you could also look into a guard goose. And they watch the skies also and will alert your flock. And there's specific varieties of goose you can get, or geese you can get, to protect your flock. So that's something to look into also. If you can have a rooster, um, some additional benefits of them is then you can incubate your own flock. We have done this in the past where we have gathered some eggs that have been fertilized and we put them in an incubator and they incubate for about 21 days and we have had a lot of success with that. We've had 60 to 70 percent success rate actually um, producing our own flock. So I would suggest a rooster for that. It is really cool to see and be a part of. And very importantly, what types of chickens do you want and what's your purpose for your chickens? So in here we have our meat chickens, which are big red broilers. Uh, these are meat birds, so they're gonna get bigger faster. I also do have some Americanas in there, which will integrate with our egg layers, which are over on this side. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna incubate their eggs. We did get one rooster with them. And then we're gonna keep incubating eggs over time until we have a giant flock of them and then we'll harvest them all at once so then we can fill our freezer with meat which is also an awesome thing to do with chickens it's going to be healthier than store-bought and it's going to be just a good life experience and then there's also egg laying varieties which are like my americanas i have a few in there and then also on this side is where we keep most of them now when you're looking into egg laying varieties there's a few things you're going to want to take in to think about one is do you care about the color of the eggs different chickens lay different colored eggs we have some white eggs from our um, egg horns and you can also get green eggs from our Easter Eggers. And then we have a variety of brown eggs from tan all the way to a deeper brown. So egg variety of color and then also egg size. Different chickens are gonna lay different size eggs. Our Easter Eggers lay these smaller ones. And then we also have another variety which lays these ginormous ones. It's okay. 
So after shooting this video, we did notice that this little chicken here was having some trouble. Um, we have had egg-bound chickens in the past, which I think she's in the beginning stages of it. So we're gonna, what we're doing right here is I have her in a lukewarm with a little Epsom salt tub to try to work that egg out because if you don't get it out, they will die. Um, so basically what you try to do is you clean around the vent let them soak and try to gently massage it out without trying to break the egg. In being 100% truthful, usually when a um, chicken gets egg bound, it's really hard to remedy the situation. Hopefully since we caught this one early, we'll be able to work it out and she'll be okay. But in the past, we've usually caught it pretty late and they haven't survived. After shooting this video, um, we ended up with a chicken where I'm not 100% sure if she was egg bound or if she had some sort of other illness going on. And then we isolated her in this coop right here, which is another reason that we have um, all these coops in here. So if you do get a sick animal, you can keep them away so the other animals do not get sick. So she was kept in here for a couple of days. She seemed to make a pretty good recovery and then we reincorporated her with the other chickens.